Hey, thank you, Donna. Uh, we called a regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order at seven o'clock. All members of the boards, uh, the board uh, are present. Uh, and uh, Donna Lanza will be representing the town manager's office this evening. Uh, Andy has taken ill and uh, is on hopefully on the road to recovery, but not able to attend because of that. So thank you, uh, Donna, for that. Uh, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Pledge of Allegiance. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I will do the Pledge of Allegiance. I appreciate that, Dan. Thank you. So we go. Uh, uh, recognize the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Larson. Now, I will ask again, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? I don't have anything from our end, so. Okay, okay, great, thank you. All right, with that, we'll move to uh, section four in the agenda, which is public comment. The section of the agenda is reserved for persons in attendance who wish to briefly address the board or request that comment be limited to three minutes or less. Persons wishing to comment should type comment and your name in the chat box and you will be recognized. Uh, I don't know, Donna, should I direct my question to Dory or who's monitoring the box? In this case, would it be Dory? Oh, I'm I'm doing that. So okay. there's nothing there's nothing at this time and there will be okay. another opportunity at the end of the meeting. Okay, very good, thank you. Moving to section five, I'll turn to Donna for good to know or anything for special recognition. For special recognition, um, I would like to just um, recognize um, Sherry Wood. She was our children's librarian at the Douglas Library for many, many years. Um, and she recently retired. She retired at the end of the year. Um, she wanted to go quietly, which is what she did, but um, she was mm -hmm. a very long term um, employee and did a great job for us in the children's department. So we you know, thank her for her many years of service. And we are now actively um, recruiting for a new children's librarian. So, and that's all I have for good to know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving on to section six uh, on the agenda, appointments and resignations. So the uh, first uh, Hebron Board of Education resignation um, in, in our packets was a letter from Mr. Pettit resigning his position on the Hebron Board of Education. And that term runs until November of 2025. We have a motion in your packet. If I may turn to one of my fellow board members uh, to present that motion, then we'll move to any discussion. Uh, Tiffany, would you be so kind? Delighted. Move that the Hebron Board of Select and accept the resignation of Keith Pettit from the Hebron Board of Education with thanks for his years of dedicated service. Further, that the selectmen designate Friday, January 12th, 2024, as the posting date for the vacancy notice. The 35th and final day by which nominations shall be received is Friday, February 16th, 2024. Thank you very much. Any, uh, any discussion? Uh, and I uh, thank Mr. Pettit, but very happy. The Board of Education's loss is the Board of Selectmen's gain. So nice to see Mr. Pettit continue your public service. So thank you. Uh, so hearing the motion, um, please uh, vote by signifying if you agree, aye, oppose, nay, or if you wish to abstain. Mr. Larson. Aye. Thank you. Tiffany. Tiffany T A I. Claudia. Claudia Riley, aye. Mr. Pettit. Keith Pettit, aye. And Peter Kasper, aye. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Next, on our appointments and resignations, uh, open space and land acquisition committee appointments, Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance, representatives to the open space land acquisition committee uh, should be formally appointed. The selectmen have designated Keith Pettit and Board of Finance, and the Board of Finance have designated James D. Donato. There is no term for these appointments. So there is a proposed motion relative to these two uh, potential appointments. Uh, Claudia, would you uh, read the motion, please? Sure. 
move that the Human Board of Selectmen appoint the following individuals to the Open Space Land Acquisition Committee. Keith Pettit, representing the Board of Selectmen. James D. Donato, representing the Board of Finance. Thank you very much. Motion's been read. Is there any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, we will move to a vote. Uh, Dan. Uh, Dan Larson, aye. Thank you, Tiffany. Tiffany Teeley, aye. Thank you, Tiffany. Claudia. Claudia Riley, aye. Thank you, Claudia. Keith. Keith Pettit, aye. And Peter Casper, aye. Motion carries. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, we're moving to item C. The Hebron Historic Properties Commission resignation attaches a letter from, or in our packet is a letter from Elizabeth Gannon resigning her position on the Historic Properties Commission. So I'd appreciate it if the motion were to be read. Uh, Dan, would you be uh, kind enough to do that, please? Uh, sure. Moves with the Hebron Board of Selectmen accept the resignation of, the, of Elizabeth Gannon from the Historic Properties Commission with regret and thanks for her years of service. Okay, thank you for reading the motion. Is there any discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, aye. Opposed, nay. Or any abstentions? Please note that as well. Uh, Dan. Uh, Dan Larson, aye. Tiffany. Tiffany Teeley, aye. Thank you. Claudia. Claudia Riley, aye. Thank you. Keith. Keith Pettit, aye. And Peter Casper, aye. Motion uh, passes unanimously. Thank you very much. That is it for section six. We will move to Donna and section seven, which is the town manager's report. Okay, I'm not sure if Andy had anything prepared, but um, just a few, oh, hang on a minute, just a few things that I can report um, that we have um, finalized the audit the, and submitted it to the state. So that is something that, um, we're always happy to be able to report. Um, and that we're in the middle of receiving our CIP budgets and department budgets, and we'll be reviewing those over the next several weeks with, with the department heads, um, preparing to bring those forward to you, uh, CIP next month, and then the budgets in March. And we have um, several new staff on board, um, some that you you already met um, last month or the month before, and they've jumped right in. And we also have two new full-time staff at the fire department. We have a new building maintenance person. So lots of new people um, learning the ropes. And I believe that is it for now. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Donna. So section eight uh, is old business. And uh, the first item, section 8A, is the American Rescue Plan State and Local Funds Recovery Update. Would you be able to speak to that, Donna? Sure, I can give you a, a quick update. We did update the, um, the balance and currently the, the balance in reserve is um, $283,151. That may change a little bit because the um, we're waiting for one more invoice from the architect for the company number one garage bay expansion. So that number um, in the reserve may go down a little bit once we get that final invoice. Um, and the town manager is recommending that the $14,000 that was designated um, for the generator switch and connection for the senior center be returned to the reserve fund because the generator we thought we were gonna be able to redeploy there, we cannot. Um, it's just, it's oversized and not really a good fit for that location. So there will be a request you'll see in the CIP for, um, a natural gas generator properly sized for that building. Um, and then I could just give a, a really quick update on the hybrid meeting room. We are still working on that. Um, the quotes that we received from the first company were way over budget. Um, we're, I met earlier this week with another company and they are 
preparing proposals for us. So we'll see where those come in at. Right now, what we're gonna focus on is getting the town office building meeting room into uh, some hybrid solution that Selectman Pettit has been helping us with. We're um, getting the equipment that we need to make that happen. We'll be testing it and hopefully uh, be doing some test meetings very soon. And then we'll focus um, the funding on the library um, meeting room for you know spending the money over there. So we think we can we think we can do um, the selectmen's meeting room at the town office building for a very reasonable amount of money. So, Mr. Pettit, any uh, additional co color on that? Uh, you know, in some terms of research costs or your perspective on on that. I would, since you've been involved, could you add some perspective? Um, uh, yeah, I just had a quick meeting with with Donna and Andy um, to go over some of the the things that they had um, originally put out to bid, and and whereas a lot of those things are are good to have to meet all of the FOIA requirements for hybrid activities. Um, there were some which were a little bit more Cadillac-y than others. So I, I think we agreed to kind of um, take a first stab at the, the minimum requirement for FOI and see how that works out so that when we go to the Douglas Library, which is a much larger, much more robust space, um, we can kind of see where we want to end up between the budget side and the Cadillac side um, so that we're pricing that room appropriately. But those those tests and those, you know, tryouts that we have at the town office building, um, hopefully we'll be able to take advantage of that sooner rather than later and for a fairly reasonable sum. Um, it, it may require... Um, you know, it, it's not going to be state of the art. We're not going to walk into some like, you know, glass palace thing, but it will work. It will meet all of the FOIA requirements and we'll kind of um, get it done. So timing, Donna or Keith, in terms of that initial, I, which I think is a good idea. We might, we need to try, we might try something. Yeah. So that's the idea. So um, what, what's the idea of timing, do you think? We we didn't really we didn't really want to start off with a board of selectmen meeting because there's a lot of participation online and if there were any issues. So I think one of the lower commissions, um, Andy and Donna, I think had had recommended maybe EDC or something like that to do a couple trial runs to work out any major kinks. And so I mean, I think an optimistic time frame would be the beginning of March. Maybe a more realistic time frame would be the end of March. For, for the trial or for he, for our board of selectmen. Oh, okay. Board of selectmen. So the the, the, the trial should probably be happening in the next. I don't. I would say month and a half. Month. I, that sounds very reasonable. I we do have. Um, we were able to acquire some Chromebooks from the schools um, that we'll be using. And then we're, um, we just received some other equipment, microphones, speakers, and a camera that we need. So now we just need to get back into that room, set everything up, connect it, and run a couple tests. And then uh, Matt Bordeaux has volunteered to trial it with EDC or open space. Um, and then we'll be ready to try it with the selectmen. Uh, most of our March meetings will be at the library. Um, the budget meetings will all be in person at the library. So I'm not sure what you will, will decide to do with the, the March regular selectmen's meetings, if they'll be back you know, in a hybrid format, in virtual or in person, you'll have to decide. Okay, and I know uh, Claudia and Tiffany both had interest in this topic. So, uh, Claudia, any comments or thoughts first to you? Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for their work on this and Keith for stepping up, volunteering your time to move this project along. I think it's been long awaited and anticipated. Um, I would like to um, also volunteer for the pilot if uh, Matt Bordeaux needs 
so body, so to speak, <laughs> at the meeting. I'm happy to receive a link and and help manage that so we can see how that goes. Dry run, so to speak, so we can um, be ready um, in March to get going with the Board of Selectmen. Looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Tiffany, anything you wish to add or questions? Nothing further except just to thank everybody that's working on this. Um, and I, I'm pleased with the timeline. Thank you. Dan, anything from you? No, no comment. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, thank you, Keith. Thank you, Donna. Um, I, I, this seems like a, a good approach and, and some good progress. And so thank you. Thank you all very much for that. Um, thank you. Now, You're welcome. Uh, and just back to the, um, you know, the couple of projects that we are going to um, move money into the reserve fund. I feel that we should wait until we get that final invoice from the architect and then vote on re that revised number. And then maybe at the same time we could vote on, or the selectmen could vote on that $14,000 for the um, the generator. Okay. So we'll have okay. a, you know, for better number, firm number. That's fine. Good. Are there okay. questions for any of the other projects? Well, I, well, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, since I started, I'll start and then I'll turn it over to the rest of the members. One of the things that I, I wanted to think about is um, it seems like we're at a point now where we've made some significant adjustments, a couple of some more significant adjustments, and it might be an opportunity for us to reconsider as a board, a workshop, a workshop. I know we've talked to other board members about this, so we can sort of level set and think about prioritization and some other sort of ways to maybe just have everyone get up to speed and, and help town prioritize, help allow us to be bringing more information out to the public and have everyone get up to speed. So um, I just, Donna, I just wanted to at least throw that out there as a concept uh, for, I don't know if we have to, we can schedule that or if any other of the board members agree that we should do that. Well, actually, before I turn to Donna, let me ask um, the board if um, if that's something that they're interested in. I'll, I, I'll start with Claudia. Yes, th thank you, Peter. Um, so in thinking about the, the ARPA projects, um, all the previously approved um, projects in the last year, uh, I started to think about a little bit about how we're going to move the ball forward, so to speak. So I know there's expectations or actually uh, from the government that we have these funds spent um, in 2026. So by 2026, you know, Time does move forward, so I want to make sure that we are uh, moving forward on these projects. As we can see from the list, there's a long list of a number of projects. Um, I am getting concerned because I feel like there's so many on the on the list that it's almost like we've reached a point where um, how are we going to identify on the long list of, of course, you know, well-deserved projects, they're all important to different people, different groups. How are we gonna identify uh, so we can move forward, say the top three or four priorities so that we can look to, at the list and actually see completion of projects? For me, that would be very important. I think there's some expectations um, from the taxpayers, from the public, that we're actually gonna be moving forward and getting these projects completed. Okay, so thank you for that, uh, Keith. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with Claudia, and I also um, I, I look forward to any type of workshop or other, you know, um, uh, special meeting or something that we want to have, or even if it's a, a subcommittee meeting to kind of look at this uh, in more in more depth for those people. Like I know you know, Tiffany and Dan and, and Peter have been with this for years, so you have quite a bit of in-depth knowledge, but, um, uh, you know, Claudia and I are kind of coming into this um, with with just what we've seen so far, not necessarily the backstory to some of these things. So um, any information or workshop or anything like that to kind of better understand where we are and where we're going, um, put, put me down for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tiffany, any comments? I don't have anything further to add. I think having a separate workshop on ARPA approved 
most helpful when we were trying to get our arms around the number of projects. I agree with what's been said. There's a lot here. I'm pleased that there's a lot complete, but um, to be honest with you, I, I echo Claudia's concerns. There's a lot on here that are not. Um, and I have asked for additional information that goes beyond just in progress, right? And so I think um, any more specific information we can uncover at a workshop would be helpful. Um, and I also see there are some projects on here that have not had any movement at all, like the dog park. And I think those are topics we're going to have to resurrect and examine because if some of these projects don't have the wherewithal or the space to move forward, then they really shouldn't be on this list anymore. And that money should move back into the reserve as well. So we have an understanding of exactly how much is left to cover whatever overages may come in. So um, I'd be in favor of an opera workshop. I found it extremely helpful. And I think for the new members, they would find it helpful as well. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Dan, anything to add? Uh, yeah, so definitely a workshop is needed. Uh, we also have got many projects that have, have been completed. Uh, so we need to verify if those final bills have, have been uh, handed in and paid. The one I'm thinking right off the top is the uh, town center project um, program where they had the building built. Um, we also need to, because what we did is there's a lot of different projects that are with other department heads throughout the town. So we need to see where they are with their, with, you know, with their progress. Uh, so, you know, that something sadly that because everything came in so fast, that was never able to be done. Uh, and whether or not it can be set up is to try to get some sort of a overall long range town plan. Um, right now, things seem to be just stuck in here or there, wherever they'll kind of fit. Um, and I'm not sure that's really overall the best way to do to do something like this. Sadly, we don't have the time probably to sit down and, and work out a master town plan for, you know, for uh, facilities locations, uh, but definitely a, a, a Saturday or or some sort of special evening meeting would definitely be a good thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, I appreciate that. So Donna, it, can we at least as a, as a go forward item, we'll be looking to set up a, a workshop. So I'll defer to you to, to provide some recommendations on that uh, timing on that. Um, I'll speak with Andy and we will um, come up with a few dates and send out an email to come up with, with a date that works for all. Very good. Thank okay, you. thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, so at this juncture, anything additional associated with the American Rescue Plan, the ARPA funds, or, or are we in a good spot to move on? If not, I'm not rushing, just, yeah. Um, it looks Dan. like Dan has something. I was gonna say, uh, do you wanna take a quick survey to see if people would rather it be an evening or a, or a Saturday? Just so the town staff can set up some times around the desires? Definitely not a Saturday with respect. Okay, okay. Yeah, I would think the town staff probably doesn't want a Saturday, but I'm speaking yeah. of <laughs> Dory that are on the line. But why don't we start with, can we, can we throw out a couple of dates and times for uh, during the week? And let's just let's just react there, Dan. And if, if yeah, some no, reason that's fine. I'm just saying, just to find out what people's wishes are rather than put a bunch of uh, dates together to have everybody go, what? No. <laughs> I, I would agree with Tiffany that I think you know, let's shoot for during the week um, and in, in a week that we don't also have a board of selectmen meeting. Uh, and let's see if that if that works in the next few weeks. And, and then if that doesn't, we'll go to plan B unless someone yeah. is in disagreement with that. I know Claudia likes to meet on Saturdays, right? Oh yeah, at seven. <laughs> So anyway, so let's try now. Let's see what if we can come up with something in the next couple three weeks uh, during the week. And yeah, that'd be great. And we can board selectmen meetings, and let's just see what that looks like. And Dan, if mm -hmm. we have to go to Plan B, we'll go to Plan B. Oh yeah, yeah. no, I'm just as I say, just trying yeah. to get an idea, a flavor. Yeah, no, I think the flavor is what I'm hearing is during the week if we can, and then we'll go we'll go from there if that doesn't work within a timeline that people are comfortable with. Yeah, I'll buy the and, I'll buy the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and honestly, I'd like to get 
kind of an idea from from Andy because you know Andy knows all of our um, I guess we could call them sub schedules. You know, like I just got done having an OSLAC meeting, and you know Dan has meetings, and Peter, you're going to have AHM coming up. So um, you know, we, we may not all be aware of each other's different things, but I think Andy and and Donna have a little bit. Um, better grasp of how busy we are, at least in the town, maybe not personally. Um, so yeah, it, I, I'll give them first shot at finding something that fits with our at least public calendars, maybe not our private calendars. Very good, thank you. All right, I, I appreciate that. We'll move that forward. Um, and for those following along, um, 8B is noted um, with the asterisk is as no need for discussion or action at this time. So we will be looking then for uh, moving to 8C, which is the Department of Public Works Action Committee update, which um, would be me. So um, I will provide that briefly if that is okay with everybody. So uh, we're making um, we're making very good progress. We have a series of uh, meetings coming up. We've met uh, a number of times already. Um, we have a meeting on the 10th of uh, next uh, next week. Where we're going to be uh, taking a tour of the uh, Old Colchester Road site with our new Public Works Director, so to make sure everyone on the committee is has a visual of of, of the site and and can it allow them you know, some a, a good perspective as as we then correlate that to the material that the building committees developed and architects have developed and all that going forward. So that's the tenth, the eleventh. We're having a meeting with the architectural firm um, that did the past work and the assessment of the Old Colchester Road site. Uh, it's the works a little dated so well dated uh, so the cost would be dated if there's any cost in there but the actual scope of work and the assessment uh, there's a significant amount of time and energy and money that went into <clears throat> some work in the past that uh, we felt was important that everyone revisited or visited for the first time uh, in terms of committee members um, to make sure we understood some you know 10,000 foot level what did the past work reveal about the viability of that site uh, for expansion and um, an improvement. Uh, so there's a lot of work done there that has already been paid for. So uh, we'll be going uh, getting a presentation uh, from that firm on the 11th. Uh, and then our next regularly scheduled meeting will be then on the 16th of January, uh, where we'll go through the details of the past two meetings in terms of the visit and the associated information um, that we reviewed from an historic perspective. And um, we'll take the next steps to, um, we'll also take the next steps to, we conceptually agreed to, but it obviously, it, excuse me, it, we conceptually agreed, but it has not been part of the official agenda, but we, on the agenda for the 16th will be a communication committee uh, that we um, will establish that will be made up of the public members, uh, not the building committee members, but of the public to uh, formalize a communication plan uh, and coordinate that with town and the associated other outlets um, associated with broad level communication to the public, because at that juncture, we will have, uh, I think, enough to report on. I didn't think it was important enough to say, hey, we met. I want to be able to come back with something a little, with a little more substance, um, even though it'll feel like it's long in coming, there'll at least be some, some points uh, of reference and some substance that we can report to the public. And then I'll work in conjunction, we will work in conjunction with Donna to update the town website to, um, to provide that link there and then be able to uh, at least start down the road of a broad level communication plan and bringing that information forward. So uh, that's where we are with uh, with that. Any questions or I know I sort of went through that quickly, but there's a lot going on there and I wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that I shared. The, yeah, great, the great job, Peter. Great job. Thank you for that. And I think the, the fact that there is some um, focus on the communications piece of it all is very critical because um, I think we've uh, learned lessons from the past on the communication piece, so good job. I think that's probably the most, well, it's the most critical item because it'll be a long road, as you know, for, for a project yeah. like this. But the, the key, yeah. I think you're exactly right. We have learned some valuable lessons about not being as effective communicating as as we should have been in, in hindsight and some key things, key yeah. areas and, and topics. And so we're going to yeah. make a concerted effort to mm -hmm. sort of 
adjust and, and make sure the public is fully aware. And so they can reach out to us individually, any of us to ask questions. Yep. They can feel like they're part of the process and not feel like they're catching up uh, right before a referendum or something like that, or getting their news, frankly, from sources that may not have all the information right. available. And uh, we want to make sure that we put out the information first right. and make it visible, yep. and, then, and then we can react yep. from that point. So yep. any other uh, comments, questions associated with that? I welcome any, any of from any of the other board members. Okay, thank you. So AD, uh, current public works facility update, no need to for discussion or action at this time, but it still is on our, our list as old business. Um, then we move to um, 8E, which is the Charter Revision Commission update. So Donna, do you wanna provide some commentary on that before, because this will obviously be something that we'll spend a few, a few sure. minutes on. So we, um, after the December meeting, we did revisit, um, Ch Chairman Casper asked us a few questions, um, and we did revisit the prior Board of Selectmen's recommendation to the new board. Um, we looked at other referendum or, or vote dates besides the um, November 2024 date, and we ended up seeking a town attorney opinion, um, which you have all been um, provided the opinion and it is attached mm -hmm. in this agenda. Um, so the town attorney's opinion was, he did not feel um, that it would be wise to try to rush this and for a vote in November of 2024. Um, he did explain what would be involved with a May 2025 um, budget, uh, coordinating it with the budget referendum, and that would be considered a special election, and there are some heightened um, requirements for that, a larger uh, percentage of vote voters in the affirmative are needed than at a, a general election. Um, and that may be difficult to attain. And also just the, the communications around that um, may be more challenging and it would need to be um, two ballots at that uh, May budget referendum date. So um, the recommendation is that we have the board rescind the motion that was adopted at the prior meeting or rescind the resolution and then um, restart the clock. Then this would be the third time we're restarting the clock, um, but we want to get it right. So um, the first thing would be to rescind and then um, the new resolution would be to start the clock again. And that could be um, that could be done tonight or it could be done um, at the next meeting. I don't know if there are any questions. Well, I, yeah, I first, if I, if I may, just to, since we have, and I've been on both boards, mm -hmm. um, since we have bounced around a little bit, I, I just thought it would be helpful um, because I think some of the, my fellow me members of the boards have opinions on the timing and, and all that, that we, open it up for a little uh, discussion to make sure everyone's voice is heard in terms of uh, their interest in um, changing the date and, and if they wanna add any comments to, to this. So I, I think if we could do that first, just to sort of get those opinions out on the table, if people on the board wanna talk through that, because I know we've had some differences uh, of, of perspective on this um, to make sure that, that those voices are heard and then uh, and then we could sort of move to the procedural elements of the next steps on this, if that is that if that's okay. Um, so I'll, um, in no particular order, uh, Claudia, do you have thoughts on, on on this in terms of the this this approach that we're now taking? I just want to give everyone mm -hmm. a chance to speak. Mm -hmm. Obviously, being new to the process, um, for me, the memo that was written by the town attorney for me provided a you know. A really good co context. He did a great job of sort of outlining the history behind uh, previous charter commission activities and timelines. Um, so that that helped me, you know, understand the process a little bit better. Um, 
you know, with the recommendation of having the actual vote in in um, November, no, May of 25, right? Um, I would say with, with that, I would be in support of that. But after reading the memo and understanding the point, I would be in support of that. Well, let me just make sure I understand. So you're in support of we, the, the revised recommendation would be November of 25. Are you, you're saying you're in support of May of 25? Um, I am in support of what the attorney said, which I think was okay. November. Okay. Okay. November. We, I had asked to buy, so make sure I understand your, your thoughts and I don't misunder yeah. misinterpret them. So yeah. I had originally, we had originally talked about, could there anything, Dan, in our, some of our discussions we had brought up, could we have it in May as a compromise? Because originally we were thinking 24, but didn't mm -hmm. feel comfortable. Some folks didn't feel comfortable with November of 25. And we looked to May as a potential compromise. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and then the attorney was to at least recommending that we consider it to be November instead of May. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're okay. So your bias is towards the attorney's recommendation. Yeah. After reading his memo, oh, I'm comfortable. Okay. I just, I didn't want to misunderstand. Okay. Yep. Thank you for, mm -hmm. for your thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan? Uh, yes, I was, I was the one that was suggesting uh, to see if we could move it to the May, not realizing that it would have created a lot of other legal issues. Uh, so I I will go back to the November 2025 20, uh, date. Um, I'm trying to ascertain in my own mind if we rescind our previous motion, are we going to institute a new motion or not and i was looking through it and i don't see what that new motion would be um i mean i've whatever i i've been kind of trying to get so this procedurally thing. how do we how do we do that so if we were to make a change donna we could do a depending on the clock starting we would uh, we rescind the previous resolution and then we have a new resolution tonight. That's that is correct. That and new resolution decide when the clock's going to start, whether it's right this meeting or the next meeting. Okay, right. so right, and it looks like we could rescind the resolution and then provide a new resolution, an updated resolution to by the correct. Um, okay, path. so are we going to try to stay with the seven members, or is that a number that we're looking at changing? Because I know. The previous boards, we had been all over the ballpark as to the numbers of members to serve on this. And I believe I've kind of steadfastly stated seven. And I think, Tiffany, last time you had said seven. Um, so are we being advised to change that number? Um, no, no. That, we're not being advised to change that. All right. Now, if the group today in our discussion says, hey, we should change that number, clearly we could you know, in a, in a new resolution, we could alter the number, but I'm with you. The last couple of meetings, I didn't hear anyone deviating from the seven. Now, clearly, if anyone's had more time to think about it and wants to change their mind, I mean, that's the point of the discussion. So, um, all right, well, let's, let me, so, so I can keep this straight. So you're still on the seven, Dan, right? Uh, yes. I, but as I say, I do know at one time we yeah, had okay. said, you know, more, but I, I'm happy with seven. I think it's a okay. manager. So just so I can sort of keep this, in, you know, moving along in a structured format, let me go back to Claudia since you raised the point, Dan. Mm -hmm. Claudia, are you still comfortable with seven? I think you were the last name, but if you've changed your mind, let's. I'm interested in hearing that. As, yes. To add to your I'm, comments. I'm comfortable with the number seven. It's it's okay. it's an auspicious one, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So at this point, I'm not okay. I just want to make sure when each of you comment, I I guess add to your yep. comments for Ethan yep. and and Tiffany if. If you think the numbers should change to Dan's question to make sure that at least we put that out there, I think again, um, as, as part of this dialogue, I think it's good to level set since we bounced around quite a bit. So I'll, uh, uh, Keith, if you want to add comments, I would appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I am still firmly stuck on seven. Um, I also, after, you know, reading. Uh, 7-191 and, and getting the information from the uh, town attorney, I'm completely in agreement about November of 25 because I, I really think it would be a waste of money for us to go and print ballots and then not hit 
a target in May. Um, you know, it, it, I, I don't think we've seen numbers in past referendums that would support achieving a, a goal that would make that feasible. So, um, yeah, I, I think at this point, November 25 is basically where we're at. Okay. Thank you for that. Tiffany? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, totally firmly set on seven. I, I think anything else gets far too unwieldy. And I think um, seven is plenty to kind of, you know, discuss and ascertain the questions that we're setting forth. Um, I'm still not super thrilled about November 25. I, I think it sets um, a pretty poor precedent in terms of looking at previous timelines for charter revision. This would be by far the longest. Um, but that being said, I don't want to stand in the face of progress, and I think we really need to get rolling on this as soon as possible. Um, what I am encouraged by is seeing a lot of new people put their names forward to volunteer for this commission, and it's my sincere hope that most of those new people can get added to the commission after discussion because we are always asking for new volunteers, and it seems to me we've got a good crop to choose from here. And I think that's important, right? So um, I will go along with November 25, but I do want to state, you know, a personal objection I have to a two-year process. Um, and I think in the future, we should look to tighten that timeline. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And just to close out the discussion, I am also in agreement uh, with the number seven. I think for all the points that have been raised, I would agree. Uh, and um, not to, to prolong the discussion, I also am in agreement with November of 25 based on the information that's been presented in the recommendations that have been put forth. So um, <clears throat> let's, uh, we'll end the discussion on that, those two particular items. So Donna, just for me, so with that, with then uh, procedurally help me uh, making sure I do this correctly in terms of rescinding that, that resolution, what is, what's necessary to do that so in terms of the vote? I, we did not prepare a, a motion for that, but I think um, if, and probably um, would be best if Tiffany presented it since she is the person who presented it on December 7th. So if Tiffany could rescind the resolution from um, for charter um, from the December 7th meeting, and then I think we do that first, and then we could go into <clears throat> the second resolution if you determine to do it tonight. So Keith, you had your, you have something you want to add to I, that? I, you know, I'm I'm not trying to persuade anyone here at all. I'm just throwing another item out there because Donna and Andy had put on the schedule that we could either, especially now that we're talking about such a long timeline, we could either restart the clock this meeting or we could restart the clock next meeting. We only have to rescind if we restart the clock this meeting. If we wait until next meeting, it will expire on its own. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. Well, that's that's a good point. Um, I don't have any issue with starting the clock the next meeting. And and Donna, if you know me personally, but obviously, welcome everyone else. Welcome to jump in. Um, would it also then allow us, from a timing perspective, to make sure that the uh, anyone on the board didn't have any additions, deletions, or changes to the items that are on the uh, currently on the agenda, would it would it help us? Would we want to be doing that at the same time when we started? If someone wanted to add, or I don't know if everyone's done. I know we had an initial view on it and a bunch of ideas were put forward. Um, so if we were to make any initial changes, would it be prudent to make those prior to starting the clock again with here's, or is that not important? Is that timing not uh, important? I, I do think that selectmen should go through that list and determine okay. if there's any items you want to remove from it, um, if there's anything that you would like to add to it, and if there's any priorities that you'd like to set. We just need to have that list finalized um, ahead of time, or at least, you know, we don't want to be trying to finalize that list the night that we're making the official charter revision appointment. So if, you know, okay. I would so we, want we to could see do that at the next, we started the clock next meeting, we could 
Resolve, yes. We can send the resolution, pass a new motion, and take any feedback on the agenda on, on the list of items and wrap all that up and start the clock on the next meeting. Correct. Yes. Okay. Is anyone in disagreement with that? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Okay. I don't see uh, where, where did Dan go? I don't see. I'm here. Oh, there you are. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to read all the past minutes. I didn't want, I didn't think, I thought you might have fallen down or something. I see your head. I do a you okay, Dan, time. with that sort of the next meeting, the clock starts, we rescind the resolution, we look to the new motion, we make sure we give the board an additional couple of weeks if they want to revisit any of the items. And I think probably most importantly, Donna, your point about, uh, and we talked a little bit about this, I think, I think back to the ARPA discussion, is there any prioritization? Is there any sort of, you know, feedback we can provide, at least out of the gate in terms of what we're mm -hmm. looking to accomplished here mm -hmm. uh, because as everybody knows it comes back to us uh at some point mm -hmm. um uh, during the timeline so dan are you comfortable restarting the clock because i know you were looking whatever. at whatever next, next week i mean next meeting excuse me <laughs> is every, it's is everyone good moving everyone's good moving on then in that timeline i see you shaking if uh claudia yes. you're okay yes okay donna that's how we'll proceed thank you Okay, AF, uh, Board of Selectmen, Rules of Procedure. Donna, anything you want to add here? And then I, we do need to have some discussion, but anything you want to add to start this um, old business item, 8F? Um, I don't have anything really um, to add to what you, you already have in front of you. I would just say that um, the the most important one that you probably should adopt would be that one pager that is entitled the rules of procedure guidelines, because um, that is what right now what we have in place that governs how you conduct your meetings. The other policies and procedures and protocols that are attached, those we can take up at a later at a later time. We just wanted the new board to have all of the existing procedures protocols so okay. that that first one is the one that i would think is is the most important the one that is dated currently it's dated february 18 2021 mm -hmm. so the procedure the conduct the public comments the agenda now uh right. keith uh, your apologize as i'm getting through my notes your comments and you had some good suggestions were they specific they were specific yes to um so we all probably talk about those yep so one of my suggestions was for that um that one that donna just mentioned the rules of procedure um so it would be updating that section um for public comment hold on one second i want to say it's the third the third item on that list is public comment. Yep. So, um, so it would be updating the third section to read, this section of the agenda is reserved for persons in attendance who wish to briefly address the Board of Selectmen. The board requests that a person's comments be limited to a single period lasting three minutes or less. While the board respects the right of the public to provide, po to provide comment, this time is not intended for open discussion or a board response. Residents who wish to request a dialogue should make arrangements to do so through the town manager's office or the board chairman. Does anybody disagree? Let me make it structured. Claudia, uh, any agreement or disagreement or disagreement or modification to that recommendation? I support the recommendation. Tiffany? I support that recommendation. Dan? Uh, I, I look at it both ways. I'll, I'll support it. Um, you know, there are times that people want to communicate with us. Uh, and I, I've been at other boards where people may comment and never, ever get any kind of response back from the board, the chair, or anybody. So they're, they're, they just felt like their comments were unlistened to or ignored. Um, I don't want us to get 
to, to that kind of a, a reputation. That's my only concern. Okay, thank you. And my opinion is to add to it, I, I support it. I think that the um, we should have this structure and the and encourage so there isn't any miscommunication that we are very open and and welcoming to the public's uh, interest in a dialogue and, and but that our meeting is not uh, the time and the place for that in terms of uh, an exchange and a more detailed uh, discussion on an item that they may feel very passionate about or of interest in exploring or questions or concerns and I, I think speak for the board when we are, are all available to the public uh, and obviously um, like the idea of being able to manage that through the the town manager's office if there's some additional comments but so hopefully we can we can create that balance um, for the public who is comfortable that the structure of this meeting is not intended to be an open dialogue although we welcome uh, their 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 interest in having a dialogue about an issue but we want to do it outside of the context of this meeting because we have obviously the business of the town to attend to when these yes. meetings even in abbreviated formats are still you know relatively lengthy so um, I, I think it's good awareness and as long as we're doing our job on the other side of making sure people feel welcome um, to reach out, to email, to call, to set up meetings, to go see Andy, to go set up a meeting uh, through the town manager's office, to reach out to any of us individually, as long as well, that's clear. And I'll put that on the record that we are available to the public. Um, and we just want to make sure we structure the meeting in a way that um, is indicative of what we're trying to accomplish during the meeting. But by no means does that mean that we're not interested in, in public dialogue. It just has to be done um, differently than uh, within the context of this meeting, other than the public comment, the way it's defined. So I agree. So if we can, um, uh, Donna, you have those changes. Can we make those changes into that section? Yes, we can. Okay. And then Mr. Pettit, continue. You had a couple other things as well, but maybe I'm looking at your notes. Um, um, the only the only other item I had was an update to the um, the separate protocol we had, the virtual meeting protocol, mm -hmm. um, bullet number five. Um, I believe currently it says that, and and I know we don't always necessarily follow this. We're a little bit more fluid, but um, you know this is technically the procedure. It says that uh, board members should type comment in the. Um, chat box to be recognized. So I wanted to at least procedurally um, kind of make that a little bit easier by adding the raise hand or other appropriate functionality of the hybrid uh, software being used. In this case, it's go to meeting, but um, you know, if the town ever moves to something else in the future, like like Zoom or or Teams. They all have their own unique, different um, functionalities similar to it. Um, I just think that, and I know we don't always adhere to it, but I would at least like the procedures to be somewhat close to reality, um, that we don't have to type or, or we're not being expected to type comment in the chat box. Yeah. Yeah, first so of all, never the, gonna, never gonna see it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, so bullet five would be updated to read uh, board members wishing to speak or make comments should use the appropriate functionality of the virtual conference system. For example, raise hand or type the word comment in the chat box. They will be recognized to speak by the meeting chair. Anyone want to add any comments? Good. Uh, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Keith, for taking the time to to. to thoughtfully present those and I think those are good changes. So um, unless there's anything else, I think we can move on to the next item. Donna, are you comfortable with oh, that? Mr. Chairman, I actually have I actually oh, have okay. something else. Okay. Um, so I don't know where this fits and I don't know that it necessarily needs to be a written change. Um, but what I've observed in two years is that I think um, I think we need to develop our own protocol as to when we allow members of other boards to comment during our discussions. Um, I think that we need something in place where, you know, certainly if it's a if it's a finance topic and we'd like to hear from the board of finance chairwoman, I think that's fine. But I think there's been a lot of leeway given to various members of various boards that I've observed in the past two years. 
And certainly when I'm liaising other boards and commissions, such as with the Hebrew Board of Ed that I just attended, you know, I don't speak. I, I'm there to listen and kind of observe. So I don't think that needs to be written, but I do want to see us move in a direction where those interruptions are limited, or at least where we have a protocol in place where not everybody on any board in town feels familiar enough to raise their hand and interject on discussions unless you specifically as the chair would like to hear from them. Okay. Thank you. And so, okay. And I think that, I think as I think, if I may comment on that, I think my understanding, if we follow the rules, everyone should be muted except board and the those representing the town manager's office at the meeting. Uh, and, if, and if we adhere to that, and I think sometimes maybe we haven't, as if, if I think back, because someone no, normally shouldn't be able to just start speaking. Um, and sometimes I've seen that, whether it's the public, someone all of a sudden wanted to make a public comment, just a person in the public wanted to interject on anything, on any topic. And then I'm like, oh, I'm always like, where did that come from? And I'm looking to see who it is. Um, so if we adhere to the muting line, everyone but the town manager representatives and the board, um, that it would at least prevent sort of that person who passionately wants to jump in on any topic for any reason. And then that would lend itself to um, a board member uh, or, you know, or any of us recognizing that this might be an opportunity to talk to the chair of the board of finance because, and she's on the line. Um, could we ask, is it okay if we ask her a qualifying question to provide some subject matter expertise? So I wonder, Tiffany, it's just a thought, if, if we adhere to that, would that allow us to sort of minimize that? Keith, you, I saw your hand raised, so you wanted to... Sorry, I, I was I was going to wait for you to be done. I just wanted to. Oh, I'm just uh, starting to ramble on, so please cut. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. save the rest no, of the I, board. Yeah. Um, I know uh, this weekend is the uh, new board members training, and um, you know, e even though I'm a new board member, I've been on other boards before, um, but I still find a lot of value in these new board member trainings because. Um, it's not every day that, you know, just the general public uses Robert's rules. And I think that having, uh, you know, a brief workshop or an introduction or just, you know, every now and then reinforcing uh, Robert's rules of parliamentary procedure, it helps us to understand our rights and responsibilities um, as board members. I, I mean, I completely agree with Tiffany. Um, I've I've been on boards before where someone has started speaking and they've kind of hit a threshold, but they go a little over. Um, or sometimes where someone is asked a question and they expound for a half hour. Um, and and I understand that sometimes when we get off topic, any of us as board members can you know do a point of order and and bring it back to the chair. You know the chair has has many. Um, rights as far as uh, maintaining order during the and, and decorum during the meeting. But I think, you know, for those of us that are new, like like Claudia and myself, um, but even refreshers for for the rest of the board, um, it's helpful to kind of go over Robert's rules again so we know what tools are available to us. Should I, you know, I be sitting here and something is going into its 25th minute and I feel that we've deviated from the agenda and I, I want to say something, but I don't know what, um, you know, having that familiarity with Robert's rules would really help in that situation. That's a good Maybe point. A it's like we would normally think about point of order or even like if we're having a, a prolonged discussion where a board member deviates and, and you, and you don't remember or don't understand that you could call the question which then stops the discussion and brings the vote to bear because you didn't realize you could actually stop it. Saying, listen, I'm hearing Peter for the third time say the same thing. Uh, you know, we don't need to do that anymore. We need to move on. And I think everyone's made their point. So let's call let, I'm let's let's call the question. And until I served, I didn't even know that was an option. Uh, and, and, and so that's a couple of good examples. And I think that's a good point, Keith, where we at least understand where we can help uh, if, if for some reason we deviate. So. I guess back to Tiffany, I think it's a great point. And I, I think if we create a little bit of, of discipline and awareness, um, and we might be able to manage it accordingly, because uh, we all have the same intent. Uh, and then if maybe you feel like we're not doing that, then we can sort of think about another approach to um, to addressing it if, uh, if you feel that we're not doing that adequately. Is that, would that be acceptable? 
yes, that works for me. I just wanted to be on the record as saying that is something I've observed on these meetings over the past couple of years. And I think now with the new board, there's an opportunity to reset and just have some protocol on um, on those types of things. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anything else on the, uh, at least at this juncture, on rules and procedures for the board of selectmen? Thank you for all the good comments. Anybody? Nope. Okay. So, uh, so any other? Just, oh. Go ahead, Peter, Excuse me. If we could just have a, a motion just to. Yep. Donna, I'll, I'll, yeah, Donna, I'll move to accept the um, Board of Selectmen rules of the procedure as presented with the two amendments. Okay, motion's been made. Any further discussion? Hearing uh, or seeing, uh, hearing and seeing none, uh, we'll move to a vote. Uh, Dan? Uh, Dan Larson, aye. Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Thank you, Claudia? Claudia Riley, aye. Heath? Heath Pettit, aye. And Peter Casper, aye. Motion uh, passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you, Donna, for that. Donna, ready to move on? Okay, thank you. So that moves us to 8G, which is any other old business. Seeing nobody raise their hand. Dan, did you, I see you're looking at your notes. Is there any, do you, I don't want to rush through this section. Are you good? Okay. Okay. So no other old business at this time. So that moves us to nine on the agenda, which is new business. Donna? So we have um, a, as I mentioned earlier, um, we're recruiting for a new children's librarian. And as we normally do when we're hiring these full-time spots, we review the job descriptions and make changes um, if they're necessary. So we've uh, presented um, the library director's recommendation for changes. The library board has reviewed um, and approved the changes, and now we're looking for the board um, to approve the revised job description. So Donna, could you look at uh, page two of the job description, please? Sure. Pull that up. Yep. Under the physical and mental effort section. The second sentence, it looks like a word's missing. While performing the duties of this job, the employee frequently is required move. It should be to move from to there. Move. So if you could please uh, add yep. that word. Will do. Anybody okay. have anything else uh, for modifications to the job description or concerns or discussion associated with it, Keith? Um, and and this is more a question for Donna. And if if Andy needs to weigh in on it, I don't know. Just coming from the school side, I know that um, you know the job positions and and working there requires background checks and the associated stuff to work with minors. Um, because this is focusing on children's library, I didn't notice any you know requirement or any notification on there that a background check would be conducted. Is there one for this position, or is it a requirement that they pass a background check? Keith, that's an excellent question. Um, and it's been such a long time um, since we've hired for this position. Uh, but we will I will discuss that with Andy. Um, and you know, similar to when we're hiring for parks and rec. Um, staff that work the prep program in our camps, they all yep. go through a background check. So I think that um, is definitely something that we should consider. Thank you. That's a great point, Keith. And yeah, I think uh, in general, there should be consistency to Keith's point. Um, so whether it's drug tests, background checks, whatever it is, whatever we have, um, we should have some consistency uh, across the board and monitors, you know, have that be modernized. So great point, Keith. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Yeah, and sure. forgive me if I don't, didn't notice um, on the job description, do we have a, a salary printed on here for, for this position? 
we don't include the salaries in the actual job description because the mm -hmm. job description is well should be more long term. But the if you're asking what we've um, advertised this position at, I believe in um, I believe it's fifty five to sixty thousand. Um, so as 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 a rule or or what is the protocol when when the town does publish job vacancies and job descriptions are our salaries typically not printed with the with them they're not included in the actual job description mm -hmm. they are um, in most cases included in the advertisement in the advertisement okay in the, That's the, in the advertisement that would be in you know we post the advertisement in the paper with the labor department website any you know like in this case, the library, you know, library association website, but where we publish our advertisements, we in most cases do put the salary or a range. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I think it's helpful to have salary ranges um, only because obviously you want to get the candidates to submit applications who are, you know, going to be willing to work at that particular salary, whatever it may be. And secondly, it is. Primarily the, the trend these days in the HR world that when there is someone hiring that the job range is is not a mystery. I think that's something that's of the past. And so I'm I'm glad to hear that that that, that is out there for public knowledge. Thank you. Other thoughts, suggestions, comments on this? Dan, you good? All right, so I didn't take a note. Did we actually make the motion yet? No. No, I'm sorry. Um, so I'll, I'll make the motion that we move that the Hebron Board of Selectmen approve the revised job description for the Children's Library Librarian as presented with the associated amendments. Uh, is that appropriate at this juncture? Because obviously Keith has the changes and then I had the one change. Uh, is, is it appropriate or should we table this down until those changes are, or until the uh, points that Keith made are, are reflected in the job description. I should ask the question before I read the motion, but I'm just thinking about so it. I, it I, I'm comfortable with adding um, a background check Okay. Mm -hmm. in, into that. Um, so I think you could go ahead with those amendments and approve I'll it. I'll just for that distraction. So I'll, I'll read it again. A move that the Hebron Board of Selectmen approve the revised job description for the children's librarian uh, uh, as as amended. Mm -hmm. Presented and amended. Any additional discussion? Okay. Uh, Dan? Uh, Dan Larson, I. Thank you. Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, I. Claudia? Claudia Riley, I. Thank you. Keith? Keith Pettit, I. Peter Casper, I. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Now we're moving to 9B, uh, Schedule Small Cities CDBG Public Hearing. Donna? This is something just procedural that is required as part of the small cities um, grant that we have for the senior housing project down at Stonecroft. Um, we had a public hearing at the uh, beginning of the project a couple of years ago, and now one is required uh, as we're wrapping things up. So um, we have the um, motion to set the public hearing, and then I've attached, um, for your reference, the actual public hearing notice. And this would be um, right before our February 1st selectmen's meeting at 6.30, and it would be virtual. And I, if anyone has any questions about what that project entails, I did provide a brief description, um, but if anybody has any specific questions about it, I would be happy to respond. Okay, so let's read the motion and then we'll move to discussion where those comments can be raised. Dan, would you be kind enough to read the proposed motion, please? Uh, sure. 
moved that the Hebron Board of Selectmen schedule a public hearing for citizen participation to review the town's 2019 Small Cities Community Development Block Grant Program and solicit uh, citizen input. The virtual meeting will be held on Thursday, February 1st, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Hearing the motion, is there uh, any discussion or your questions, uh, Keith? Uh, Keith Bennett, aye. No, no, I'm sorry. I have a discussion first. See, anything you wanted to add? I'm just no, I'm good. good. Uh, Cla Claudia? I'm all set. Thank you. Good. Tiffany? All set. Thank you. Dan, anything you want to add? No questions? No. I don't have any either, so we will move to a vote just as a reminder all in favor say signify by saying aye oppose nay or any abstentions dan uh dan larson aye thank you tiffany tiffany teeley aye thank you tiffany claudia claudia riley aye thank you claudia keith keith Pettit, aye thank you keith peter casper aye motion passes unanimously thank you very much thank you moving on to not Good. Thank you. Uh, no 9C draft agenda for our January 18th uh, meeting. We did obviously discuss a couple of changes. If you want to uh, make any changes or uh, to the agenda, please contact the uh, town manager's office. And so that is in your packet. Is there uh, 9D? Is there any other new business that needs to come before the board? Donna, anything you have? I, no. I don't have Got anything. It. Okay. Is there any other new business? Anybody have anything that I'm not aware of? No? Nope. Okay. Thank you so much. That moves us to um, 10 on the agenda, which is the consent agenda. And the consent, excuse me, the consent agenda items are considered to be routine in nature, which the board may not discuss individually. It may be voted on as a group. Any board member who wishes to discuss a particular item in this section may request the chair to remove it for later discussion and a separate vote if necessary. So we have two items on the consent agenda, the approval of the minutes for December 7th, 2023, which is the regularly scheduled board of selectmen meeting, and then B, the list of tax refunds. Anybody wish to pull any item out? Okay, any, any discussion at all on this? Okay, we'll move to a vote then. All in favor, aye, opposed, nay, or abstentions. Dan? Uh, Dan Larson, aye. Thank you. Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Thank you. Claudia? Claudia Riley, aye. Thank you. Keith? Keith Pettit, aye. Peter Casper votes aye, and that is the unanimous passing of the uh, that item. And so that's 10. And then we move to 11, which is the liaison report. So at this juncture, based on our, our most recent meeting, we'll be focusing on um, the five um, items or the five uh, boards commissions listed. Uh, AHMU services, I'll start just in the order in which they're presented in our packet. I have not participated in that yet, so I have nothing to add. Uh, Tiffany, you mentioned you just participated in the Board of Ed. Uh, is there anything you wish to share with the board? There is, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, very excited to announce that um, Heather Pettit was unanimously re-elected chair of the Hebrew Board of Education. Um, take a personal point of pride to note that I think she's done a great job. Um, the vice chair is Joe Margaitis and the secretary is Sarah Coppolino. Um, also at that meeting, um, they discussed that the superintendent will be presenting his budget next Thursday. Um, in that they are also planning a budget forum for parents and that will be upcoming in February. And I think that that'll be a good step toward um, opening lines of communication as we head into what will you know, likely be a challenging budget year. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, Dan, a board, any board of finance uh, update you'd like to share? Uh, yes, uh, the board again unanimously uh, elected Diane Del Rasso as the chair with Michael McCormick as the vice chair. Uh, they had a chance to meet and work with uh, our new finance director, Lori Granado. Uh, so as she was saying that at this point in time, uh, it looks like the collections are 
of the collections, uh, 57 of the collections per month. So they're saying pretty good. Um, they are still paying, uh, we the town are still paying on the Porter Road animal case, uh, which is still a, a financial drain on the taxpayers of the town. Uh, but there is at this point, no le legal resolution. Um, uh, then Mel Lecter uh, updated the board on the disposition of the company one edition that we had voted on at our meeting. Um, they are talking about uh, what's going on with the WPCA uh, since it is a major asset with the town. Um, so there may be communications back with the board of selectmen as to whether there's going to be representatives on that or, or how that's going to uh, play out, you know, long term down the road. Um, and the Board of Finance, uh, and this would be something that they would be doing through the uh, town hall staff, would like to have an additional day for budget deliberations in presentations. Um, they do work with us, uh, with our board, um, but then we turn it over and they have a very limited amount of time for them to do their work prior to the uh, presentation to the taxpayers of the town. Um, so again, that's something they're going to try to work through with the town staff uh, to gain that extra day. And uh, that was it. If, uh, the board lays into the board of selectmen is going to be Diane Del Rosso was the only other thing. Uh, with the fire department, since there is no more corporation, really, uh, there is no layers and reports. So that actually should probably get stricken from the uh, list of layers and assignments. Okay, thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Keith, anything from land acquisition? Um, yeah, <clears throat> before we actually get into uh, land acquisition, Donna, um, I don't know if this is something maybe we can, you know, address with Andy or, or Andy can look into. I know with the pending litigation, we're not allowed to adopt out any of those animals, but is there anything preventing us from, if town residents wanted to foster them while the case was ongoing, to help alleviate some of our outsourcing issues with them. Um, I know it's a tremendous burden on the town budget right now, and perhaps there's there's ways that, you know, fostering might alleviate that if it's allowed. I don't know if, you know, I'm not familiar with the legal proceedings, so I don't even know if it's allowed or not, but maybe that's something Andy could talk about next meeting. I'll ask Andy um, to get an update on that and you know from the animal control officer and what is or isn't allowable um, i do believe he started to adopt out some of them so there's some that are her personal the personal mm -hmm. pets and others that right. are adoptable so but i'll i'll ask for an update Okay, Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much. Um, and then land acquisition, um, they had their meeting last night. Uh, no big changes there. There was a unanimous re-election of uh, Brian O'Connell as the chair, uh, John Mullaney as the uh, vice chair, and Frank Sitkus as the secretary. Um, there was some discussion on different, um, you know, land acquisition, uh, future projects and things that they're kind of going over, um, looking at better access to some of the plots that we have. Another thing that was brought up, um, I believe by Jim Cordier was getting a, uh, a one-stop shop, a consolidated inventory of all of the open space so that people are more familiar with what's available to them in town. Um, and also, for, for those of us from a planning perspective to know, you know, what is or is not on the table. Um, so I think that that any effort they put into that going forward will benefit us as a board of selectmen in making some better decisions for, for future acquisitions and, and that committee for future acquisitions as well. Um, I think they're going to put forth a recommendation. Um, probably uh, Matt will, do some sort of presentation for us at a later date. Um, there was a, a property owner in town that was looking to do a land swap that would benefit the town. 
um, but they think that they would also get some benefit out of out of having a slightly different shaped parcel. So they'll be forwarding us some information regarding that. Um, everyone on land acquisition committee was favorable to that moving forward. So Matt should have more information for us on that in the upcoming meetings. Uh, other than that, it was a ton of fun. Who knew land acquisition could be so much fun? Thank you very much, right. Claudia. <laughs> Um, lot, I don't have yeah, to, uh, I don't have Claudia, to anything from you out. on the RAM, uh, not too much to report out from RAM board of education. Their regular meeting that was scheduled for December 18th was canceled due to weather. And I can't even recall what the weather event was, but the meeting was canceled. I was informed by, um, a member of the board today that they did vote for the new chair and vice chair of the board. Uh, Heather Summer is the new board chair, and the new vice is Joseph Coletti. Um, so great leadership there, and we look forward to um, some, some good collaboration with them in the future. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that ends the liaison report to this juncture. Uh, so that moves us to uh, item number 12, which is public comment. Donna, do we have any public comment? Holly Havick has a public oh. comment. Holly, okay. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. I apologize for not having my camera on. I have a real wonky internet here at home. Uh, I just wanted to give the Board of Selectmen an update on the Town Center Project's storage facility. Uh, Country Carpenters finished their um, barn raising, if you will. Uh, they came in exactly on budget, so the project cost the town of Hebron $24,000. Thank you very much. So we'll be returning $6,000 of the budget that you guys gave to us. Uh, the Peridot Foundation had granted, had sent in a donation that allowed us to supply the roofing material on the facility. Uh, we're incredibly excited to have it be part of our downtown. We're very much looking forward to possibly having that St. Peter's Field reorganized and um, having the shed be a little bit more accessible to everyone, not just the town center project. Um, but I just wanted to thank you all very much for um, your support, continuous support as uh, we move into 2024. I know that we'll be um, also presenting over the next couple of weeks, our schedule for the town of Hebron once our board meets. But um, but tonight I just wanted to say thank you very much for your support on the shed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Holly. Uh, Donna, any additional public comment? Um, there's nothing else at this time. Okay, so that moves us to item 13. Um, if I may call upon one of my fellow board members. Move to adjourn Move at 8 22 p.m. So Tiffany moving to adjourn at 8 uh, <laughs> 8 22. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, your participation and preparation. I think it was a very good meeting. Thank you, Donna, very much for sitting in on last minute uh, for Andy. And obviously no we wish him well in his his recovery. Hopefully we'll see him back at the yeah. front office soon. Yeah. So good night, everybody. Thank you again very much.